Good everyone. I hope you guys have an amazing uh, Sunday today. Uh, so this is the last conclusion episode for the Platform Developer 2 series. Um, so I thought before I wrap up, right, just to give you guys some tips and suggestions how we go about taking the certification. All right, first of all, you know, I would like to thank you guys for being a part of the series. It's been an interesting journey and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoy teaching you guys. I mean, it just, I learned a few things on the, on the way as well. Um, and it's, it's been great. You know, you know, the reason why the, you guys are my main motivation, right? That's one of the reasons why I do it every time. Right. Right. So, uh, coming to, uh, platform developer two, right. Um, so a few things I just, I thought I just wanted to share, uh, first thing, right. You know, please just do not watch my videos. Just go and practice using a trailhead. Um, you need to do a uh, super batch, right? Uh, you can take super batch first, or you wanted to take the multiple choice first. That's up to you. But I will highly encourage you to take the super batch first before you attempt the multiple choice, because what that will do, you will get more confidence. You will get more hands on. You will understand the problem better and you will get an opportunity to research and study a bit more. Right? So that's my suggestion, but it's up to you. If you wanted to take, uh, the platform, um, this test multiple choice first, that's all good. We can go about it. Um, I, I do remember that when I started the series, I didn't mention about the housekeeping stuff, you know, the, the price of a certification, this 200 USD and the minimum score passing score is 63%, uh, because it's a platform developer. It's a little bit harder than PD one, but that's all good. I mean, if you have done PD one, then I'm pretty sure you will nail this. No problem. Um, and, uh, and you know, and you just, you know, go through this, like, like I mentioned about the, um, you know, super batch, just go through it. Uh, you'll get more information. I am not going to help you guys with the super batch. I'm afraid because I want you guys to investigate and try it by yourself. Because if I help out, it defeats the whole purpose, right? You guys need to work out. If you guys get stuck, extremely bad stuff, then I can think about it. But still, that's a kind of a cheating for me, right? I mean, it's a, it's a test, right? Um, so I really don't want to, you know, help you guys out on that super batch. You guys need to figure out that, right? My main task is to, you know, guide you to the right direction, guide you to the, in the right resource. So, you know, so that you can research and investigate and come up with a plan to, you know, to take the, you know, super batch right now, um, coming to the, uh, the actual multiple choice, right? The few tips I just wanted to share. Um, so go, go through this documentation, right? I'll just put the link in the description below. Um, it's pretty handy. Like you said, in the exams, you can take online or, um, you can go to the center now due to, um, you know, the, uh, the COVID thing. Um, most of the people they prefer to take home, you know, I like to take certifications from home. It's convenient, you know, and I don't have to commute. I don't like to commute. So, Okay, so that's cool. And these are the references. If you like, you can go through it. You know, uh, it's very handy. I would highly encourage you to go through it. And then you just go through the scores, you know, weightage, fundamentals, 5%, you know, all this stuff, right? Yada, yada. Okay, now let's do the some sample question, right? Salesforce gives you this. Uh, you might get asked the same question, maybe possible. Like I remember for PD1, uh, you know, one question came from the, the PDF, which Salesforce gave, but it was okay. I don't have the measure towards it, but, you know, just to give you an idea what you can expect. And, right, so first question. A developer needs to create a service that will process an email, send to it, and create an account, and contact using a content of an email as a data of a record. So, what they're talking about from the question, right? It's the developer needs to create a service that process an email sent to it. So we are talking about an email received to the Salesforce. And based on that email, you need to create an account and contact using a content. So it's basically what we're talking about passing an email, right? So when you talk about passing an email, so we have in Salesforce called email uh, inbound handler. Okay, that's the one which we normally use, right? So where you create a global in handler and then, you know, you use the settings to uh, pass the content or attachment using the email handler. So that's one thing that comes to my mind, right? So that's, okay, so A is there. Okay, that's great. 
Now I've used the Fuel API with email data extension. I have no idea. I never heard about the Fuel API. So when you when you come across a term, right? Say for instance, it's like it's like a um, you know isolation. Uh, it's like you're isolating the answers, right? It's like an isolation matrix. What I normally use. So if you haven't heard about the term, the most likely that's not a part of an answer. To begin with, okay. If you if you come across a term which is pretty strange for you and never ever heard before, uh, rest assured that that's not a part of an answer. So fuel API, no, I don't know anything about it. So out of question. So I cancel it. Heroku data clips to process email. We're not talking about Heroku anywhere in the question, right? Nowhere. We're talking that if they would have said a Heroku developer needs to, then you know I might have considered something around Heroku, but they didn't mention anything, so that is out of picture as well. And auto launch flow and process builder. Now, auto launch flow and process builder we can't use to this to this processing of email thing. So that's not a right answer either. So that comes to the first answer A. Okay, cool. Right. How can Apex be used with the work visual workflow? Right to test the version of the flow. Begin with no. It got nothing to do with it, so that's a pretty stupid answer. So that's not the case. To start the flow automatically, yeah, that rings a bell. That is possible to do so. You can pretty much do that. To add a custom styling, we can't do custom styling with the Apex. To control access to the flow, no, really. So, um, I mean... It sounds like you, you know, you might think mm, control access to the flow, maybe. But you know, obviously, start a you know version of the flow. It's got nothing to do with it, so that's crossed off. Custom styling you can't do using Apex, right? If you want styles are normally associated with the style sheet, so you know, so that's out of picture as well. Now you you left with two choice: control flow, access to flow. Now. How does Apex controls and access to the flow? Are we talking about the app, uh, Apex sharing? And But that doesn't come to the picture here. Uh, I mean, Apex manual sharing? No, we, we can't. We're not talking about that, right? So if you're not talking about that part of things, there's no way, you know, the, the control access to the flow makes no sense in this question. So when something, you know, do not make sense, obviously you can't, use that as a answer. So the probability reduced to less than 10%. So now you have a highest contender, uh, this, this starter flow. So the B seems like a right answer to me. An integration user makes a successful login call via SOAP API, okay. Uh, now, what can be used in SOAP header to provide Server authentication. If you work with the SOAP outbound message, you know that it's always a session ID. You can't use name credential. You can't use OS token, security token. Always the session ID. So the answer is straight away session ID. So you don't even have to look at the other option, right? It's pretty simple. Um, because if you struggle with this, really, then I, <laughs> then I'm I'm afraid to say, ladies and gentlemen, you're not ready for platform developer too. Hell no, you're not ready whatsoever. Because this is very commonly tested in Platform Developer 1. So I do understand they have a lot of Visual Force questions sometimes. I mean, this doesn't make much sense to me because Salesforce should be upgrading the, you know, the test questions, in my opinion. Uh, but that's up to them. All right. Okay. The customer has a single Visual Force page that allows each user to input up to 1,500 sales forecasts. And instantly view perverted forecast calculation. Okay, users are complaining that page is loading slowly, and they're seeing error message regarding heap and view state. Okay, so it's something to do with the performance and visual force page, right? So let's look at the answer. Three, they're expecting a three answer. Segregate calculation functionality for input functionality. If you are doing a massive calculation, right, you should obviously take that out from the main page and put it elsewhere so that it don't consume all the resource and slow down the performance. That is a valid thing. That is, you know, it does not only restrict it to visual post page, but other aspects. So the first one looks good to me. Um, specify the list of sales forecasts as a transient. No, 
it does not improve the performance whatsoever and makes no sense in this context implement pagination okay pagination you can have you know page numbers one two three so that means that entire data won't be loaded in this in one page so as you go along to the next so pagination is a good option in my opinion create formula field to compute parameter forecast I don't think so creating a formula field will improve the performance in this case right we're not uh, use JavaScript remoting instead of okay remote remoting yes remoting does have performance impact uh, so obviously formula doesn't make sense to me uh, B doesn't make sense to me so I'm not 100% sure about the E how how drastically can improve but given the choice what we have right you have knocked off B right and you knocked off D so you know obviously the A is a great choice um, you know what's the, the, the pagination is a great choice C and to me I'm inclined towards E so it will be A uh, C and E yeah okay now a developer is creating unit tests for the code that makes so uh, web service callouts the developer needs to insert some data as a part of this unit test setup which is great um, so when you're dealing with the soap right obviously you have to use the mock okay uh, so now the first thing surround the call out with test start and test stop which is correct surround the data insertion with the test start and mm, i'll park that aside for a second um, implement the web service mock interface no we're not going to do that why we have to implement we're talking about the test interface update the call code to call set mock that's right d is correct in my opinion because it will give you a fake response test or set mock so d is correct and a is 100 percent correct i'm a little bit confused with the b so implement the http callout interface we are talking about the test class right so why do we have to implement um, you know http callout mock interface we can do the same thing using test or set mock so i don't think so that e we is really a great option um so keeping that into consideration so um this one is a little bit tricky for me right i mean you might get you might get confused as well so a is surely the right one right um d is surely the right one when d is there so i don't think we need e um sorry um uh, so um so but but that being said right e out of e and b right e looks like the stronger option compared to the b okay uh because the http mock interface if you have implemented you know you can implement it you know http mock interface which is used for uh callouts anyways but uh, you know what confused me is the data insertion because we talked about the data insert uh and you know but that being said right uh b doesn't seem like a good option to me whatsoever so b is knocked off uh c is knocked off so in my case it will be e e a d e yeah um all right i might be wrong though Um, so A, D, E, that's the option I'm going for, for C, for 5. Let's look at the answer, okay? So A, C, D, okay, A, C, D. All right, so I was wrong. So implement the web service mock interface. That's right, web service mock interface, and I got confused. So yeah, right so see you can go wrong right so implement the http i was initially i said right http interface doesn't make sense uh but then i got confused with this one i was the mistake i did right so i'm telling you the the technique you know the mistake can happen right 
I overlooked it. I said, oh, we have test mode. Why do we even worry about a web service mock interface? Ideally speaking, that seems like a better option. Uh, implement, I told you, right? It doesn't seem so good option to me because we already have tests, but then still I went with it. So that's, uh, so the, uh, the fourth one, ACE, that is the A, pagination E, that's right. I got it right. Um, this is 100% correct. B, third is B, that's correct. Second E is B, right? That's correct as well. And um, first one uh, is A, Where is it A or B, what is A? Right, so that's correct. So I got one wrong, though, which is okay. Um, so this is how you normally, um, you know, isolate the problem uh, and it will help you in your exam and your certification to understand right the things which you which you might miss um, you know because sometimes what happens is right you know when you take an exam you say mm, that question looks pretty simple but doesn't make much sense <laughs> right so yeah so that's pretty much I wanted to talk about in this episode and all the best I hope you guys smash it in the first attempt uh, so that being said, you guys have an amazing uh, Sunday. Adios.